Well, it's that Adobe Max time of year in October, which means it's Adobe's conference. They release new versions of the apps. We get new features and I do videos telling you about those new features. In this one, we're talking about Adobe Lightroom new features. There's about 10 of them that I'm gonna cover here. But I remember we're not talking about Lightroom Classic. I did another video for Lightroom Classic. This is Adobe Lightroom. Uh, you can check on your tablet and phone. Some of the features will make their way over there. Some of them won't, but uh, you can always check to see which ones do. But I'm talking specifically here about the, uh, the desktop version. When you go to your Adobe Updater, you're gonna be looking for Lightroom version nine or above. Okay, right. If you're doing it right away, it's just going to be version nine. But you know they release these little nine dot whatever as as time goes on here. So uh, you're looking for version nine or above. It will replace your previous version. Okay, you don't have. It's not Lightroom Classic. We don't have to worry about all that catalog crap that gets put all over the place and upgrade and all that stuff. It's just you open it up. It's the same program you had. It gets rid of the old one, puts the new one there. You don't have to worry about anything. Okay. Um, also, one thing I always say about these videos is if you don't see your update, if you're having trouble getting your update, if it's not working on your system, the comments are never the place to ask because I'm not Adobe. You got to go to Adobe if you've got any questions about upgrading, but I can tell you about the new features. Let's get started. Now we're going to go into edit mode and take a look at really first one of my favorite features, which is a variance adjustment. Okay. So notice, see how this photo has a darker blue here and it tends to get lighter here and lighter here. That can be an, it can call attention to itself in a photo and in real life, we don't see it as much, but certain wide angle lenses and filters, it can even make it worse. And I've battled this problem for years in landscapes. Well, Adobe introduced a variance slider. So you'd go under color, you go down to point color, which isn't new, you essentially point color. And this is the way you should be adjusting color in your photos. This is the modern color adjustment aside from white balance. But you, uh, you click on a, a color here, it makes a selection of that color and you see all these adjustments below it. Variance is new. You drag it to the left, it smooths out the transition in the colors. You drag it to the right, it actually makes it worse, okay? Which you might want it to be more contrasty for like fall colors can, can help. But for skies, I don't want it to be worse. I actually want it to be a smoother transition. Portrait photographers love this on faces where people might have rosy cheeks or something like that to smooth out the skin tones. But I wanna give you two tips, okay? Tip number one is don't do it here. Tip number one is go to your masking tools, select, for example, here, a sky mask, make a mask of it, then go down to color, then go down to your point color, do the same thing, click on that color, but now do your variance adjustment on that mask. So now I've smoothed out the transition of those blues so it looks just looks smoother across. I don't have that dark blue uh, circle in the middle. Tip number two is if you wanna do other things to your, your sky, uh, I got this one from my buddy, Brian Matias, from a, who talked to an Adobe engineer, create a new mask for it. Again, go back here to sky. Even if you're gonna do more point color stuff, click on there and let's say I wanted to make the sky brighter or darker, do it on another mask. Essentially, let that, let that variance adjustment live on its own mask, all right? Okay, so that's number one. Number two, remember we're, we're kind of going in the order of my favorites, not necessarily uh, an order that makes sense, but uh, one of my favorites is also, you can now go in and you can click on a folder, all right? You can go in here and click on a folder and there's a little option up here now that includes subfolders. So, so there's three folders inside of there. All right, this was uh, some follow along photos from one of my courses, but there's three subfolders inside of there. And this has been a problem. In Lightroom Classic, people are used to being able to click on a folder and see everything in there, even if it's in a subfolder. Couldn't do that inside of Lightroom. Now you can turn that on, and now you'll be able to see all of the photos in those subfolders there. So it's a small feature, but that's gonna be, that's one that held up a lot of people. Um, and it's something that I was never crazy about, but I, I like Lightroom enough and it's easy enough for me that, that it didn't bother me too much, but I'm happy to, to know that it's there. Okay, moving on down the line, let's go back to my photos here. Uh, there is a new masking. So a while back, Adobe introduced uh, some landscape masking, which essentially segments out different parts of your photo. So you'd go to your masking tool, you go to landscape, and it'll detect various segments in your photo. There was up to seven of them. Now we have one more, which is snow. Okay, so we've had some other ones, 
but now we also get snow inside of there. So that's a, a nice little added bonus in there. I think these landscape masks, probably one of the most powerful features to hit any Adobe Raw editor in, in I don't know how many years. Uh, if you haven't used them, definitely something you need to look at. This is also the perfect time to tell you about my scene split mini course and presets. Uh, the masking that we, we have with the landscape masks that we have are available in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. They all share the same masking tools, meaning they all share the same features. So now that we have a new mask inside of here, the snow mask, it was a perfect time to update uh, that little mini course and presets in there you get essentially two parts to it. You get the presets, which is your creative boost to either speed things up or give you ideas um, and creative ideas on how you can edit your photos for everything from the skies to uh, the foreground elements in there and really break apart your photo into all those different areas so that you can very quickly edit them. Okay, and then from there, you also get the mini course. The mini course explains what all these masks are in detail, shows you how to use them because it's, it's easy to just use them on their own, but once you start combining them and learning how to combine them with all the other masks inside of there, that's when masking gets really, really powerful. And you start to realize I can mask anything almost automatically using these adaptive presets and this adaptive technology in there. So a uh, real easy course on sale now, super easy to get through, super easy to, uh, to watch and figure out. So hopefully you'll swing by and find out a little bit more. Okay, moving along to our next feature. We'll just take another photo into edit mode. This isn't necessarily a new feature. Um, we're gonna call this kind of an update, but I, I do wanna, I wanna show it to you for a second here because it's something that I think a lot of people missed. Um, when you go into your remove tools, and we'll use the actual eraser remove here because this is gonna be the better of all of them. There's a little checkbox down here called detect objects. So that's been there for a while. You click on it. And when you go in and paint, it'll go and you paint with that, it'll go in there and it'll actually detect the object that you're painting over and kind of snap to the edges a little bit better than if you had just used the brush to uh, paint over it without any rhyme or reason to it, okay? So once that's done, you'll see in a second here, it, it you know, kind of tries to detect the object. The difference, what's happened here, is now when we go in there, see under detect objects, it will also, if I were to go try to do this boat and only select the boat, it'll go in there and it'll do a nice job of grabbing the reflection or the shadow, okay? And that's not the way that it used to work. Now, if you don't want it to do that, you still have your add and subtract buttons down here where you can add and subtract from there before you go ahead and click your remove button. So again, just it's the feature's been there, it's just updated technology, if you will. All right, moving on to another one here. Uh, in the same area under the remove tool, you will see that there is a dust section down here. So you would just go ahead, there's no settings for it. You just go ahead and click apply and it goes in there and it, uh, it, it finds the dust in your photo, which you, know, you could see there's a lot of spots in here. So it would take me a little bit of time to go in here and try to find all these. So uh, it's nice to, to have the ability to have it done automatically. So I can see. That's before and that's after. All right, I'm gonna cover this one next because I have to. Um, it, it's not something that really interests me that much, but I do understand that it, it'll interest other people and that is assisted culling. This is the one that Adobe's really proud of. This is gonna, what would be considered the big feature. Um, and, I, and I do think it'll get better to the point where I might use it. But right now it's it's just not anything that I, I it's really meant for portrait uh, and event photographers. It's just not something that I would do here. But what we would do is we would go find a folder. So um, I'll go in here and uh, I'll just click on a folder here as I've got a whole bunch of hummingbirds. And so we find a folder and then you'll just notice at the top in local, and this is also in cloud. In fact, in cloud, you're probably gonna get some more features with it, but we go ahead and we open up assisted culling and we'll go in there. You'll see that you can cull based on subject focus, based on eye focus, based on eyes open. Um, you can reject based on a few different areas here. You can choose to view the selects, the rejects or all of them and then how you wanna organize those results once it does it, okay? So this takes some time. That's the, the one thing to understand is once I go in here and choose some settings to work on with this, uh, it's gonna take some time depending on how many photos are in a folder. So if you've got a thousand photos in there, expect it to take a little bit, okay? If you've got 
30 or 40, it's not gonna take that much time, but it will go through and it'll automatically put little check boxes and little X's next to what it considers selects and rejects based on the criteria. This isn't something I think, you know, I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, wildlife photographers, yeah, maybe we'll get there. We're not there yet. This is really meant more for people, but I do see an advantage to this as it tends to grow. And uh, as we get more features in it, maybe we'll be able to do it. I'm personally, there's an X factor to picking the best photo. Um, so yeah, get rid of all just bad exposures. I shot a picture of my foot, I'm fine with that. But overall, I don't know how much I'm gonna trust it to pick my best wildlife or landscape photo, but uh, it's a move in the right direction, okay? And if you go into the cloud area, and you go down here to assisted culling, you'll actually also see um, when we get down here, you'll see that there's a cull and there's a stack option inside of there. Uh, so auto stacking essentially lets you stack by time or visual similarity. So I'll choose visual similarity. And you can see here as I move it to uh, the right hand side, it's gotta go in here and analyze the photos first. But you can see like three owls down here. Uh, you can see a couple of um, one of the birds flying there. So it's gonna try to stack these based on visual similarity. So you can see it stacked the owls together, it stacked some of the, uh, the, the bird flying together, some of the other beach photos in there. As you go to the right, what you're gonna find is you get less stacks. As you go to the left, you're gonna find you get more stacks in there, okay? So go on, sc scroll through there. That's a feature I could see myself using, especially you know as a wildlife photographer, we've got all these different bursts of photos that we're taking and uh, for it to automatically stack for us and then to be able to look through that stack and see just the photos that are in that stack and pick the best one from that grouping. I could definitely see that for a wildlife and a landscape photo uh, photographer as being useful. Next up, we also have color labels. So let's head back over here. So we've got color labels in here. In fact, I'm gonna to switch to, let's turn off assisted culling. Let's go back into some of the photos we were using. So if you come up here to the photo menu, um, what you're gonna see is we've had the ability to do, uh, we've had the ability to set ratings. We've had the ability to set flags. Now we can get in there and set color labels. So again, that's another one that held a lot of people back uh, that used Lightroom Classic and they insisted they used color labels all the time. That's one that held a lot of people back. So now we get another one of those classic features uh, inside of here. Now, another one of those Lightroom Classic features that people have wanted in Lightroom for a while would be batch renaming. Okay, so you can see here, I've got four photos selected. I'll just press Command or Control A, select all four. I'm gonna go down to the little eye icon, information icon down here in the bottom right. It's gonna show all my metadata for uh, the photos. And of course, they're all gonna be mixed because I have four photos selected. But if you look under file name, uh, there's a little pencil icon. So we've always been able to rename a file. But now if we click that pencil icon, when we have all four of those photos selected, or it could be 400 if you wanted to, you'll see that you've got your naming templates and you see uh, that you can start to do some custom naming here. So you can batch rename all of those photos all at once. And then the last thing would be uh, under your presets, there are some new presets inside of here for, let's go down there too. Uh, there are some new adaptive landscape presets. Give them a try. Uh, love you Adobe. Never been really good at creating presets, but might be something in there that works for one of your photos. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this quick little recap about what's new inside of the latest version of Lightroom. Uh, chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably a Photoshop user. So uh, if you're interested, I did another video on some of the new features in Photoshop and Adobe Camera. So that'd be a great place to go to next.